Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to our installment of Scott Selections here for Thursday, April 15th. For you in today's play of the day, a quick recap of what happened yesterday. We're having a very nice day and then avoiding the play of the day with the Bucks minus nine and minus 110 on DraftKings. The injury report was kind of more entertaining than the game itself. Uh, there were some question marks on who was going to play. Cat ended up being ruled out in the morning. You saw the line go from nine to about 10 and a half. Giannis was supposed to play, got ruled out by about, I'd say, 30 minutes before tip. Line dropped to nine and a half, then closed at 10. Really didn't matter. Minnesota without Towns once again got killed because that team is awful. And Milwaukee won by 20 plus. So really just a sweat-free winner. We're going to be looking for another one of those in the NBA on Thursday. And for the play of the day, we're going to be looking at a matchup taking place in the late night card at 10 p.m. Eastern time between the Phoenix Suns and the Sacramento Kings. And for the play of the day, we like the home team here with the Suns. Minus 9 and minus 110 on DraftKings. It's on recording of 2.18 a.m. Eastern time. A couple reasons why I like the Suns in this spot. First of all, the Suns, even though a lot of people have realized how good this team is in terms of wins and losses, this team has also been phenomenal against the number. The Suns are 35-19 and 19 ATS, which is the best record in the entire league against the number. This team has been really, really good at covering spreads. And against a team like Sacramento that's been struggling lately, I think it should be able to take care of business at home. Now, looking at both teams, both teams, of course, have been in opposite directions all season long, but recently they have really been polar opposites. Phoenix has won 10 of its last 11 games. Meanwhile, Sacramento has lost each of its last eight, one in seven ETS during that stretch. Plus, Sacramento should have to deal with some fatigue. Had to play yesterday at home against Washington, so this is the second night of back-to-back. Ended up losing to Washington by 12. Also doesn't help when Washington and Sacramento play a very fast pace. So fatigue with the up-tempo and the back-to-back. That was a really terrible spot for Sacramento with travel involved. And you might have to wonder if Sacramento's going to bench some players. In today's NBA, you do see a lot of teams starting to bench some starters, whether this team's competitive or not, because of back-to-backs and some fatigue and to limit some injuries. And you look at the minutes here, despite losing by double digits, Fox and Barnes played 40 minutes, and Buddy Heald played 36 minutes. So I wouldn't be surprised to see one of them potentially not play, which could swing the line even more. Sacramento also has some injury news that's worth monitoring because they're starting two, I'd say, forwards or their two centers are not going to be playing. You have Bagley, who's been out for a while, of course, who's not going to be playing. And Rashawn Holmes, who has been their starter for the majority of the season, who's been very good, averaging 14.1 points per game and 8.9 rebounds per game, plus 1.6 blocks. However, he's officially been ruled out for the next couple of games with a hamstring injury, so he's not going to be playing. And that is important because rebounding was the main, I say, focal point of determining the outcome of the first two meetings this season. Sacramento won the first meeting in the second game of the season uh, by three. You look at what happened in that game, Sacramento out-rebounded Phoenix 67-50. to And, of course, Bagley and Holmes both had double-digit rebounds in that matchup. Now, the second meeting that ended up happening was more recent, and Phoenix ended up winning that game by 16 points. However, Sacramento still won the rebounding battle. Now, of course, it was a lot closer. They didn't win by 17. They won by two. And as a result, Phoenix went from losing by three to winning by 16. Now, Sacramento really is no big man. You go through the lineup here. No Holmes, no Bagley. They're going to have to give a lot of minutes to Whiteside. And Whiteside really has been a non-contributor over the last couple of games. You look at his last game, he played 10 minutes against uh, Phoenix in the last meeting. You're going through the actual card. He had 12-9 and nine against Washington, but he played 23 minutes in that game, 3 minutes against New Orleans, 11 against Detroit, 13 against Minnesota, 18 against Atlanta. I can keep going. He's been a role player, really has not been involved for about the last month. And now you're going to have to give him 30-plus minutes. I'm not a big fan of that spot there. Plus, besides him, you have Metu as your backup power forward, and that's basically all you have on the roster. So I think that Phoenix should win the rebounding battle, and you look at this actual team. Sacramento's main Achilles heel is defense. On pace to have the worst defense in the history of the sport. Uh, I've talked about it in nauseam how bad this team is at guarding and with fatigue, playing against a Phoenix team that is elite defensively. It's really just a terrible, ma- a terrible spot and matchup for Sacramento with the travel involved and the current eight game losing streak against one of the hottest teams in the league. And Phoenix should be motivated because the Suns, even though this team has basically clinched a playoff spot already, are only one and a half games ahead of the Clippers for first place in the division and for the two spot. So Phoenix still has a lot to play for. Sacramento really doesn't. And until Sacramento turns it around, I'm going to have to fade them. The play of the day once again here for Thursday, April 15th is going to be on the Suns. Minus nine and minus 110 on DraftKings. That's been the installment of the Suns. I'm going to call you and respect the best today. Bye, everyone.